This is the University Health Service screencast on alcohol. Know your limits. What do you class as a good night out? Does it involve getting drunk? People have different reasons behind why they drink too much on nights out. It could be to keep up with heavy drinking mates or to wind down after a stressful week at uni. So why do we need to moderate how much we drink? Medically speaking, most people who suffer health problems from drinking are not alcoholics but those that regularly overdrink for years. Overdrinking can lead to various medical problems. These include breast cancer and mouth cancer, high blood pressure, strokes, heart disease and liver disease amongst other things. Here is a graph to show the relationship between levels of drinking and health problems. From a mental health perspective, alcohol can make you happy initially by lowering inhibitions, but the depressant effect, such as feeling sleepy, kicks in as you drink more. Although problem drinking may not cause clinical depression, it can feed the problem by its effects on relationships and work. Alcohol misuse can also cause anxiety symptoms and unmask or accelerate an underlying predisposition to a psychiatric problem. So it's best to get into good habits now whilst in uni, so that you don't risk your health later on. So why is all the advice about moderation? Why can't you just store up your weekly unit allowance for one day of the week? Drinking enough alcohol in one session to end up drunk can be used as a definition of binge drinking. This is a major factor in accidents, violence and antisocial behaviour. Worse still, overdosing on alcohol can cause alcohol poisoning which can be fatal. Loss of consciousness after drinking too much can also pose the risk of choking on your own vomit which is again fatal. So if we're talking about moderation, what are the recommended limits? The normal limits are 3 to 4 units daily for men and 2 to 3 units daily for women. There is a difference between the genders because women's bodies are less effective than men's at breaking down alcohol, putting them at increased risk of harm. Individual circumstances do mean that it may be advisable for people to abstain from drinking alcohol altogether. These include people with certain medical conditions or on medication that may interact with alcohol. If you are unsure, ask your GP or pharmacist. Currently the NHS advises that pregnant women or women trying to conceive should avoid drinking alcohol. If they do choose to drink, to protect the baby they should not drink more than one to two units of alcohol once or twice a week and should not get drunk. It's all well and good knowing your unit average, but how do you use it in real life? Good drinks labelling should now show the unit count on the drink container itself. If that's not there, you can work out your units by simply looking for the number of millilitres on the container and the ABV or alcohol by volume found on its label. It doesn't cost anything to ask the bar staff before you order your drink if you're unsure of the ABV. And here's the science part. Take the number of milliliters of alcohol, multiply by the ABV and divide by a thousand. And the figure you end up with is the unit count for that drink. So for example, let's take a 250 ml glass of red wine with a 12% ABV. Multiply the number of mils, 250, by the ABV, 12, and divide by a thousand. And the number of units in the glass of wine is three, which happens to be the daily recommended limit in one glass. Some handy shortcuts are as follows. For pints, you can roughly halve the ABV to calculate the units straight off. And for 330 ml bottles, you divide the ABV by a third to do the same. Alcopop bottles are generally 1.4 units each. Each shot of gin, rum, vodka or whiskey is one unit if it's a small, all for large shots is 1.3 to 1.4 units. Doubles are exactly that for their unit count based on the size of the shop. And now for some tips if you're going out drinking from the Department of Health Know Your Limits campaign. Firstly, it's a good idea to eat before you go out to reduce the effects of the drink. Drink water regularly during the evening and before you go to bed. Take a break if you think that the drink is hitting you too quickly and pace yourself with soft drinks. Remember, a Coke looks the same with or without the rum. Don't try to keep up with friends who drink more than you, that's their choice. And don't mix alcohol with recreational drugs of any kind, it can be deadly. If you're on any medication, ask your doctor or pharmacist if it's safe to drink with it. It's also important to stay safe on nights out, so here are some handy tips for future use. At the start of the evening, plan how you'll get home. Have the phone number of a taxi firm in your mobile and keep the cab fare separate from your spending money. Don't accept drinks from strangers or leave your drinks unattended in case they get spiked. During the night, avoid aggressive drinkers. Just walk away if someone's getting rowdy. To avoid on the risk of sexual assault, don't leave your friends to go off with somebody that you don't know, and don't get into unlicensed cabs or a stranger's car. Avoid walking through dark or unsafe areas on your own as well. And lastly, always carry a condom. If you have sex, make sure it's safe. 
If you need more information, you can come to the University Health Service or you can access the NHS website www.units.nhs.uk. Also, the Drink Aware Trust, which is an independent charity helping to promote responsible drinking, has a helpful website on www.drinkaware.co.uk. This is the end of the University Health Service Alcohol Screencast.